Well, there's a new labor trend starting up in the new year. It's called quiet hiring. So joining us now to explain this latest workplace trend, I guess, is Emily Rose McCray. Quiet hiring. That's right, we're back at it again with more dumb buzzwords on labor trends. What do you think quiet hiring means? Does it mean hiring people without letting other people at the company know they're being hired? No. Does it mean act like you're in a library while you fill out your HR paperwork on your very first day of onboarding? No. Quiet hiring essentially means when your job asks you to perform roles that are different from what they hired you to do. Well, actually, let me just read what the expert says. Quiet hiring is when an organization acquires new skills without actually hiring new full-time employees, says Emily Rose McRae, who has led Gartner's Future of Work research team since its 2019 inception. Sometimes it means hiring short-term contractors. Other times, it means encouraging current employees to temporarily move into new roles within the organization. Now, when you Google quiet hiring, you'll find a bunch of different articles about it. They all talk about how an HR expert warns that quiet quitting will be the future of work as we head into a recession. Quiet hiring will dominate the US, says HR expert. Quiet hiring seen as the next workplace trend. Then over here, according to the same person, Retail Wire, same thing, talking about Emily Rose McRae. Here you can see an increasing number of companies are opting for quiet hiring. And then down here, Senior Director of Research, Emily McRae. The next major employment trend of 2023. Over here, an ethical approach to quiet hiring. Just Google it and you'll see that every article talking about quiet hiring references this one McRae person. Let me show you who this expert is. We can see the profile page for this Emily McRae person that all of these media outlets are referring to. Now, I know a lot of people in HR get a lot of crap for not doing anything, but this is different. Apparently, she leads a team that brainstorms what will happen in corporate in the future. That's right. That's that's her job. In fact, here's a post about her work. Today, I ran a brainstorming session to make predictions for the future of talent and work in 2023 and beyond. The conversation was lively and fascinating, and afterwards, several colleagues expressed gratitude for the session. You guys just talked a bunch about what will happen in the future. That's great. Because this is the primary way I brainstorm these days. I forget how unexpected this kind of thought work is and how energizing it is to think differently. Look, I know HR people get a lot of crap for not doing anything and just talking a lot, and this is no different, but it's gotta be different. <laughs> I'm grateful I get to do such fun, interesting work as part of my job and with such smart, creative colleagues. And then down here, we have the vice president, the team manager at her company. I've never done brainstorming that begins with breathing and mindfulness. Yeah, she brainstorms. She brainstorms what will happen in the future. So do a lot of people, but they don't get paid for it. Now, if that wasn't a laugh for you, she also has a post talking about how she used a potato to make an HR conference more engaging. I wish I was joking. The potato not only served its purpose, making the last presentation of a three-day conference more fun and engaging, it has also increased in value since this person suggested I get it signed by fellow Reimagine HR presenters. Just imagine for a second. All right, guys, I know this HR conference is already really exciting, but here's a potato. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what sorts of ideas they came up with during that brainstorming session for the future of work, well, let me show you the nine things that they think will happen in 2023. <laughs> Top nine workplace predictions for CHROs. Quiet hiring will create new avenues to snag in-demand talent. Hybrid flexibility will reach frontline workers. Now that's just HR speak for companies saying it wasn't fair to let some people work at home and some people that can't work at home come to the office. So now companies are like, yeah, if you can work at home, work at home. But if you pick the job that isn't work at home, then you got to come do that. They predict that managers will be sandwiched by leader and employee expectations. Pursuit of non-traditional candidates will expand talent pipelines. Gee, who would have thought? Healing pandemic trauma will open a path to more sustainable performance. As organizations get more personal with employee support, it will create new data risks. Maybe organizations shouldn't get so personal with their employees. Anyways, that's some of the bullshit that they're predicting will happen. So if you're wondering where buzzwords like this come from, this one in particular was created by what looks to be a corporate think tank. Editor Josh here, after I just finished filming, I found some footage of this Emily McRae person talking about why people don't go above and beyond anymore. If quiet quitting is when organizations lose skills and abilities without actually losing headcount because people aren't going above and beyond anymore because 
they don't want to. Quite hiring is them getting new skills and capabilities without hiring new full-time employees. So first off, Emily, let's get a few things straight. Quiet quitting is not when companies lose skills without losing headcount. It means employees are doing the requirements of their job and then going home. As for your next comment, Emily, people aren't going above and beyond anymore, not because they don't want to, but because they have been and got nothing for it. People have started to realize that going above and beyond doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get anything for it. And so when people stop doing that, it doesn't mean they don't want to. It just means they haven't been incentivized, they haven't been rewarded, or most likely, they're setting boundaries with their company after realizing they've been taken advantage of. You should know better. Now there's this particularly funny section of the article where she talks about how to take advantage of quiet hiring. If your company makes an announcement about needing employees to pivot roles and you're interested, you can use it as an opportunity to discuss your long-term goals. You might even wrangle a promotion for yourself, McRae adds. Probably not, but they'll say you will and then they won't give it to you. Think a more realistic definition. The exciting new trend where your job expects you to do even more stuff, including things that are outside your job description because it's cheaper for them and you don't want to get fired, right? Right? And besides, you might get a promotion if you chase the carrot they dangle in front of you. My thought process is they'll have more luck motivating employees by being honest about their finances as to why they're quietly hiring in the first place. What does the company's finances look like? Why can't you afford someone else to do this job? Maybe you should be transparent with me about the funny business of you saving money or us not having money. You can tell me everything you want about what you can and might do for me in the future if I cooperate, but... That doesn't mean anything. Companies are under no obligation to follow through with what they promise to their workers. With that in mind, an effective quiet hiring process rests in how it's framed to the employees. Let's just pause right there. It's how you present it. It's how you finesse. It's how you swindle them into believing that this is beneficial to them. Saying new tasks need to be completed isn't enough to motivate a workforce, but framing it by how it can improve their work-life balance or advance an individual's career is a lot better way to reach employees. It could be a win-win for everyone. For internal quiet hiring, that means presenting new assignments as learning and development opportunities. That's right, you're not doing more work. These are learning opportunities. Who cares if it's not part of your original job description? It's our company, we make the rules. <laughs> now what's hilarious about this website is they give actual examples of what you should say word for word to your employees. For example, let's say Susan has been working as a marketing writer, but you need additional project management support and you have noticed that she performs some management tasks already anyway in the natural course of her workflow. Quiet hiring gives you a way to acknowledge that work and formalize it on her record, even though you can't yet offer her a promotion with a raise. Basically, here's how to get your employee to do someone else's job without paying them for it. Susan, we have noticed that in addition to doing the writing behind our projects, you have also taken on some of the work that should have gone to our project managers. So it sounds like company hasn't been doing their job very good. Anyway, so she's been picking up slack. You have been doing such a great job at communicating with our clients that I want you to know we have noticed that don't pay the bills and want to see if you would be willing to do more of it. For what? The idea is that if you like it and you excel at it, you just said that she was excelling at it because your company wasn't doing their job. Some of her work should have been going to project managers and you didn't do that, but now you're flipping it around and saying, if you like the idea and excel at it, she's been excelling at it. These companies, dude. Anyways, it says, the idea is that if you like it and excel at it, we may be able to move you up to a higher level project management position over the next couple of years. Would this interest you? How many of you people believe that? I don't believe that for a single second. But do you see how they're telling you to swindle the employees? Like, offer them something. We could move you. We, we may be willing to move you up if you excel, if X, Y, and Z. All these hoops you have to jump through, and then we get to decide at the end of the day. They continue and say, the employee may feel compelled to say yes, even if becoming a project manager isn't appealing to them. So be sure to give the employee a way out. Of course, we don't want to push you in a direction you don't want to go. We value the work you currently do and want you to remain happy and engaged in your work. Well, how about you start by valuing the part where you acknowledge that some of her work should have gone to other employees and you did a bad job of managing that and maybe you should reimburse her for doing someone else's job from the first place instead of trying to pitch it as a learning opportunity. What you're seeing here is finesse. You can also be transparent and note to the employee that you simply need their additional help to get the organizational through a financial rough patch for what how about that why why are we having a financial rough patch what did you do mr ceo hmm? i just work here now you need extra for me without giving me extra they tell you to say this susan as you've probably heard we're moving into a recession and our company may not be generating as high as level of revenues as we have in the previous years you've been with us 
As a result, I wanted to give you a heads up that you may be asked to take on more project management work than you usually do. I wanted to assure you that this is not a permanent arrangement. This is additional work just to get us over this hump. And as soon as possible, we will be hiring another project manager. So, hey, we're giving you more work. We know it's not a part of your job, but hey, just accept it and we'll take it away or hire someone else as soon as we can. How many times have you heard, we'll hire someone for that as soon as we can, but right now you're gonna be the person doing that. And then they just never hire that person, ever but they keep telling you they will. The worst is when you get additional assignments without acknowledgement of what the long-term plan is. No, 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 training mag, you're dumb. The worst is when you get additional assignments without any extra pay, without any extra promotion, without anything extra for doing extra. You want more? You pay more. That's how it works. You're just gonna get more quiet quitting from this. You really are. You're gonna ask people to do more? They're just gonna quiet quit even more. Here's another example they give you. John, we would love to have you as a member of our team. You'll be working with our team of full-time employees and we'll be a full member of that team. No, you're not. You're a contractor. You are a contractor. However, at this time, we can't offer you full-time employment and benefits. When and if it becomes possible for us to offer you a full-time position, we certainly will. How many of you believe that? I've heard this before never comes through. Assuming your work performance is at the level we need it to be, right? So there's always some extra hoop that's very subjective at the end that the company gets to decide whether or not they follow through with what they were promising you. If your work performance is at the level we need it, it could be, and you could just be like, well, it wasn't. <laughs> and then say, sorry, we're not hiring you. That's all you gotta do. Is this an arrangement that you can live with? Why should I trust you to follow through on what you're telling me? That's my question. That's quiet hiring, guys. Getting people to do more than their job and Companies trying to finesse you or pitch it in a learning opportunity way where you can maybe get a promotion or they can make empty promises to you. And if you agree, then you get empty promises. Congratulations. Quiet hiring invented by the Gartner corporate buzzword think tank where apparently they use potatoes to enhance conferences and sit around and do brainstorming sessions that start with meditation at work. I'm serious. We all just need to become HR ladies. That's that's the new move. All right. Um, I, I'm actually going to go. I'm going to go do that right now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like and subscribe if you want to see more. Oh, and if you have any other buzzwords that you want me to tear apart, slide in my DMs. See you in the next one.